Okay, there's a possibility that uh, this might work. Um, I remember back when I was um, using SS2, uh, I think, uh, I don't know if that's when SS2 included power, um, power grid tools, the DLL. I don't know if it uh, you know, had it all the time or they included it at a later time. I actually uh, had downloaded the tool and put it in, you know, I put it in uh, in my game. I installed it, so when Fallout Script Extender runs, it'll load that um, Power Grid Tools DLL, and it provided a function in the command line to let you check your power grid. And I I don't have that particular one installed, but I but SS2 does come with one. I I have that still installed because all I did was deactivate the plugins for SS2 although the data is is still in my uh, it's still in my game folder all right so um, if you go and I did I did it already but if you take a look over here um, what I'm gonna do is here I got CPG one so you can do check power grid one and I guess one I'm assuming one I'm not sure what that is so I'm guess one means yes zero means no like true and false uh, on and off and uh, you'll actually see where it comes up, and it says Checking Power Grids Workshop. See where it's got the workshop ID? I'm thinking you might be able to pass that to uh, the program, but I mean, pass that to his DLL. But here's the problem with it it may need the power grid loaded uh, from the workshop. I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be kept in memory, but the, 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 the game engine might offload that, that data. And then once you get into the settlement, it tries to reload it, and that's what's causing the crash. Because it seems like if the if the list was active outside of the settlement, it would crash when you're outside of the settlement. Um, so that may be why SS2 is limited to its particular plots, because it does something similar, but does it in script form, and then calls the uh, power. I think it's Power Grid Tools DLL. But you can take a look where it says total number of connected objects, and there are no errors in this power grid. So I literally can do this um, in any settlement. Now, when I was using SS2, um, but I, I didn't actually manually build my settlements, I uh, was using the basic city plans, and I noticed that every now and then, when I did this, when I went into a settlement, it said there was corruption. That particular corruption didn't cause a crash, at least not at that point. Once I think it gets to a, a, another, I'm not sure what's, you know, another stage of corruption, that's when you have a crash. So you might be able to, when you go into a settlement, to do a seat, you know, go into the console, you know, hit, a t you know, hit the little tilde key to go into the console and do a CPG1 uh to actually see, and I do believe it fixes them automatically if it finds them. Um, without knowing the cause or anything like that, um, it, and not being able to trace the data or actually put a hook into the power grid so that it just checks it constantly. Like I, I know that I think um, I think Workshop Framework checks it. If I remember reading that correctly, it checks it when uh, you go into workshop mode. Um, but you can, you should be able to check it any time from the console. So let, like, let's say you're in Vault 88 when you're done. You can uh, hit the tilde key, maybe do a, a CPG1 to see if uh, that will actually work. Uh, I don't know if I can turn this down or not here. Um, let's try that. Um, you can do a, a CPG1 and see if that actually works, you know, uh, in other words, if it if there is a corruption, that it would actually find and, and correct it, which it should. So I'm guessing if I was doing what you're doing, I would go into Vault 88, make my changes. Um, I would do a CPG-1 from the console just to make sure there's no corruption. I would export the settlement using Transfer Settlement. It's, and it's very easy to do. I, uh, I, I don't know if you've done this before, but... Uh, here in my game, it actually shows it under games, I think. And basically, you just go into this and you want to export the settlement. It'll ask you where you want to export it to. Um, 
And these are all the settlements I've exported. So you would pick uh, whichever one you want. And then once you pick this, you actually would go up here to, it'll, you know, and it'll tell you if there's any dependencies. Like I do have mods installed that, uh, that gave me workshop items that I put in the settlement, such as CWSS, which is like working showers, working toilets, uh, working sinks, things like that. Um, and then, and then if you, when you're ready to do it, you just hit export and off it goes. And it will literally export uh, everything in your settlement. You can set it up to export uh, items that you're, uh, like the original items that you find in the settlement or just items that you yourself have, have built. Um, that's what I did here. So see when I'm done, I'm gonna export this and then on my next playthrough, um, I will import this again. And now sometimes when you import it, it does import, uh, it, it'll, it'll duplicate an item because one's already there. Uh, it'll, it'll duplicate it because I'll, I'll actually go in and use raise my settlement to clear everything off, but it doesn't clear everything like beds. So uh, you'll have duplicated beds. You'll have to get rid of the ones that were originally there. But when I reload this back up, I like, well, now I reload it back up. When I start a new game, I'll re-import the settlement and then I'll add a little bit to it. So that way I can kind of enjoy running around playing the game and still build settlements without feeling like I have to build settlements like literally all day. Because that's, man, that, that is no fun. But you can try using CPG1 uh, from the console, see if that works. Hopefully if it finds something, it'll tell you before a crash happens. Um, like I said, I have had, when I, when I was using SS2 in City Plans, I did have it occasionally show up. I, I do not know what caused it. Um, I have, I have no idea. Um, it's, I, I don't know if it's the, the, the data, the way the data is processed, the scripts are firing, a, a problem in the VM engine. Uh, I'm not really sure, but see if that helps and try that and, uh, just kind of see if that'll kind of alert you to a potential problem. Um, and, uh, good luck with it and let me know if you, you know, you still have, uh, you know, still have any problems.